Hi everyone, it's uh, Dutch Reefer here and welcome to the new Focus Friday video that you're watching right now. So, as you know, if you've seen my previous video, you'll know that I uh, bought a few new fish uh, last week. Um, and uh, those are doing fine, by the way, so that's uh, they have been in the tank for about a week now. And, uh, well, they're... Uh, getting uh, used to the tank and tank life and getting accustomed to all the other fish um, so for your memory that was uh, this uh, tank, this Desjardini uh, which is a really nice sailfin tank and it has been nibbling on some algae and just scouring the reef and doing a great job and there's this small cleaner fish uh, which also uh, well actively uh, tries to uh, rid the fish in the tank of any unwanted parasites or whatever so it's it's uh, scouting all day looking for little pieces here and there to eat and of course the ribbon eel the blue ribbon eel uh, which is uh, tucked away tucked away in uh, one of his two caves that he has uh, stolen from the sand, uh, from the sand cleaning uh, Puelaris uh, gobies. So this one has taken refuge right here, because well, yeah, the ribbon eel stole his living room, living space. Um, the funny thing is, I did call it a uh, leaf-nosed eel or a leaf-nosed moray last week, which is actually a translation of the name we use in, in the Netherlands and. I found that technically it's okay to use this name, but the more common name is Blue Ribbon Eel, so I'll refer to it as Blue Ribbon Eel from now on. So you'll all know what I'm talking about. But that's not what I wanted to show you. What I really wanted to show you is a fish that is back from the dead, or not really back from the dead, because the other one died in quite an unfortunate way. Um, we're talking about the spotted drum which is right here this is actually a fish that you don't see every day in your local fish store and that's why I was very much surprised pleasantly surprised when I went to my local fish store yesterday and they had one swimming in the coral display and I thought well this is almost too coincidental so yeah it was let me tell you the backstory first for those that don't know I used to have a spotted drum uh, which can you can see in a lot of my previous videos got a lot of questions about it people really like the fish I really like the fish it was really a personality in the tank and then one day when I set up the new tank I created this uh, nice reef top reef cover by DD aquariums but unfortunately this one is only 180 centimeters long well, my tank is 195 centimeters long, so I missed a little piece. And that's exactly what happened. The fish jumped out of one of these openings right here onto the net and then dried up right there. Which is, of course, a very unfortunate thing to happen. Uh, since, yeah, you don't wish that upon any living creature. And then again, it was yeah one of the fish that I really liked in my tank like I said a very nice personality or a very present uh, personality so it was always showing itself flying across the reef as this little one is doing right now so yeah I'm, I'm really very happy to uh, uh, to stumble across this uh, fish um, like I said you don't see it a lot in your uh, in your LFS I don't at least I don't see them a lot Actually, I haven't seen a single one in the time period from when I bought it until yesterday. Um, so yeah, just really stoked to have this back in the tank. And uh, especially to see it growing again. Uh, because, uh, well, if you watch the latest or some of the most recent videos where it was still alive, then you'll see that it was a lot bigger. Um, the fins, the fin use will uh, will shrink over time. So this one still has a very large dorsal fin that will shrink over time as the fish gets bigger. And uh, well, the name says spotted drum, uh, but it's only uh, actually a bit striped right now. And that's because the spots will... 
and that's because the spots will develop uh, over time so as it gets older as it matures the the fin on the back will get shorter and then the the piece of the fin behind that will develop spots and that's why it's called a spotted drum well drumfish uh, can become quite large so that's one of the reasons why I upgraded my tank in the first place um, of course because of the copper band uh, which uh, I like a lot and which has grown uh, tremendously large over the last five years five years already next month in November it will be in my tank for five years so I wanted to give it a bigger bigger room to swim a larger space but also the spotted drum, uh, which even needs uh, needs even more space. So, uh, well, all in all, uh, I am very happy to uh, to have this fish back. Um, of course, you can uh, you will see him grow up during the upcoming uh, videos, and uh, yeah. So yeah, that's something I wanted to share with you all. So moving on. Um, maybe we can get a few more shots in as this video uh, goes along for the next few minutes. Um, the tank itself has been doing okay. Um, it's not perfect yet. Uh, one thing that has been doing a lot better in the last few weeks is the sand. I did develop some cyanoalgia uh, over the summer, course of the summer. Uh, but that has disappeared mostly, so the sand is uh, is actually really nice again, really nice and clean. Um, although I, there's still a lot of detritus on the rocks, so that's one of the things you get when you're setting up a new tank. The rocks will get dusty, they will look grey and dirty, and well, because they are. Uh, so as you can see, the rocks themselves are not very clean yet, uh, maybe apart from this part. Uh, aside from this part, I mean, uh, which I have already uh, glued together as a new pillar, so you can see a little bit more purple here. Um, but also this, uh, these kind of rocks, they're still very dusty, and uh, yeah, I I will blow the dust off with a with a, a turkey blaster every other few days, every few days. But still, it takes quite a lot of time before that clears up, and uh, well like with all good things it takes time and uh, that's not that bad it's that's okay um, you cannot get back to the level you were uh, within a few weeks it will take uh, months maybe even a year or longer uh, until uh, well until the tank has settled in a bit like it was before so moving to the other side um, same story actually so as you can see right here rocks are still pretty dusty and dirty and uh, yeah, well that will uh, it will clear up over time but it will take some time one of these I think don't they know if it's a rock anemone or a crucifer anemone, oh, anemone. Uh, but it has moved uh, across the reef so it moved from all under the under the rock and now has taken uh, taken its refuge uh, here right in between the uh, zoanthus which is uh, really nice to see them moving around and then when you come home from work it has moved another 10 centimeters these kind of things so coral wise this recordia is doing uh, very well uh, I've had this for about uh, well a year now I think and it, uh, well, it has settled in really nicely underneath this uh, Acanthostrea echinata the orange one also got some new zoanthus, which you can see right here. I assume they are uh, utter chaos, but still, still not sure if they are. They look like utter chaos, but at least they're nice and shiny and orange. And of course, the clownfish are doing fine in their euphilia. I kind of hope that they would migrate to this euphilia uh, right here, which is a torch, uh, but they haven't yet, so. Uh, well, I'll give them some time, and if they want to stay here, that's perfectly fine. I like them in my uh, view, so that's uh, just uh, just great. Oh, one last thing I wanted to show you is this uh, blue linkia starfish. It's a bit hidden away right here, but you can see its paws. That's also uh, one I added uh, recently. So that's it for this week's video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Uh,